Okay. All right, guys, here we are again. We're still talking about female reproductive stuff. And today we're going to talk about fallopian tubes and the uterus itself. Now, one of the things fallopian tubes are also called uterine tubes. And what they do is if we have the uterus like this, it looks like a pear and about the shape of a pear. We have these two little um, tubes that come off and they have little fingers called fimbriae. And here's your little ovary. Once the ovary pops off one of those little eggs, it goes in there. Now on the fimbria are little cilia that will, will coax and pull that towards. These actually have little muscles as well. So they'll try to pull that egg towards it so it can get from here and eventually implant in the uterus. It takes about seven days for it to get from here to there. Um, fallopian tubes, uh, da, 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 da. And it gets to the uterus. The uterus is also called a womb, of course. And they used to think that uteruses cause uh, hysteria. And hysteria is is what we call, that's why you have a hysterectomy, right? You get rid of your hysteria. And that's one of the things that females were basically uh, used as experiments and subjugated by medicine for surgical purposes. And they still do that today when, when women become a little bit too emotional, they can give them hysterectomy because they're saying there's too many hormones and this kind of thing, which is, um, I guess, okay. But how come they don't do that with males who are too aggressive? Why don't they take out their testes? I don't know. So, but let's talk about the uterine, not the uterine, uterus, not uter me, it's uterus. Here's a uterus. It goes like this. It has a, um, what we call a fundus, which is here, it has a body, okay? And it has an isthmus, isthmus, which is down through here, that's this section, I-S-T-H-M-U-S, and then over here, this is called the cervix, okay? Now there's a, an internal opening called the internal os, and there's an external os or opening here, and there's a little tiny canal, and then you have an open space in here, so it's a big chunk of meat. It's a smooth muscle um, mass, which is very, very strong. Uh, inside here, we have what are called the the inner layer, which is the endo, or endo everything, endometrium. We heard of that one, endometrium. Endometrium can uh, end up breaking off and end up out here, and we had what's called endometriosis, a condition of the endometrial tissue being outside of the uterus, which isn't very good. The middle area is called the myometrium, and that's the muscle section, which is M-Y-O-metrium. Okay, and then the inner side or the outer side here is called the perimetrium, and that's just the outside fibrous coverage, and that can also expand and get many, many times bigger. Uh, um, what do we call it? perimetrium? P E R I metrium. Okay, that's the perimetrium. So there we go. That's uh, pretty easy to understand that kind of stuff for the anatomy of your uterus. Now remember, we have the fallopian tubes, which are attached like this out here, and then you have the ovaries over here, and you have the fibrillae, uh, all that kind of stuff, and those, the egg comes off here, bounces through here, and don't forget there's the ligaments, there's three ligaments for the ovary, there's the uh, suspensory ligament from outside, there's the ovarian link ligament here, and there's broad ligament that holds it all together, okay? <clears throat> so now, we're going to erase this real quick, and we're going to go over the, the accessory organs for the female, which remember the accessory organs for the male. Uh, well, this is accessory organs, actually, is the uterus and the fallopian tubes and the cervix and the vaginal canal. Now, from the external os, we have here's the, the cervix. Now, the cervix is actually the same. We have it like this. There's our uterus right here. Okay, this is the same kind of tissue as the prostate. At least the cervix is. They're called homologs, and they're very similar. The vaginal canal is similar to the the sponges corpiosum. Corp, uh, spongiosum corpus spongiosum and corpus cavernosum the same kind of material but there's a little bit um, some differences basically it's the same system just inside out okay so the vaginal canal is collapsed okay and it'll open <coughs> um, uh, in this area here right here where this loops around in that area is called the fornix and there's a posterior one and a lateral one and stuff like that well the posterior inferior one on the back bottom side of course is where uh, that's an area where the uterus can actually dip down into if there's semen there to pull up that sperm cell so they can get up into here and go to the, the cell and, and um, uh, fertilize it. So uh, external, we have what is called, we call it the vulva, and on top of the pubic bone is called the mons veneris or the mons pubis. Now, I don't know why we don't call it the same thing in the male. I think because it has a fat layer underneath the skin. Um, the male is just called the pubic bone, and remember the penis is right below it, and so is the the uh, all the genitals and all that stuff is below or or whatever the distal to it, 
So the inferior distal posterior, probably, I guess, if you were looking at anatomical position. Same thing in the female. For some reason, they call it the mons pubis or mons veneris, which is after Venus, you know, the goddess of love. Um, <clears throat> there's two sets of labia. You have the labia um, majora, the outside covering, and that's the homologue to the scrotum, actually. It has the same kind of tissue, the same kind of innervation, and so it has the same sensory uh, tracks as we go back and forth. And then on the inside, we'd have the labia minora, which is a smaller version of those two, which kind of holds, uh, closes off the the, uh, the opening of the, the vagina. And then inside that, you'd have what's called the hymen, which is usually just a, a remnant of skin that's not completely covered, and not all women have them. And um, there are some some weird uh, um, historical and, and uh, uh, cultural uh, mores about that, but we don't need to get into that because that's a totally different animal we talked about in class. Um, <clears throat> now, at the top of that whole system is the clitoris, which is the same tissue as the glands of the, the male penis. It's a very, very highly innervated, and um, uh, its function is basically for stimulation. Okay, and uh, it helps with some of the lubrication because of the stimulation of the bubble urethral glands and all of those kind of things. We, and uh, uh, we have Skene's glands, or vestibular glands next to it. And when those help to uh, keep the pH correct, keep the protection correct, which is the mucous membranes and stuff like that, and also the, the lubrication of that area as well. So there you go. That's, I guess, all of the female reproductive stuff. I mean, the only thing to go on to after that would be the perineum, uh, which... Not really, you know, too much about that. The male have a perineum too. It's the uh, uh, basically the the diamond shaped area. If we're looking at the bottom, you know, the mons pubis here. We have legs right here. This would be in, and the, there's the the gluteals. We have anus, vaginal canal, and urethra. It's kind of this this area here, right? And that's kind of the perineum. And the same thing in the male. Uh, the perineal body is <coughs> the the the. Uh, uh, perineum is the area between the reproductive organs and the anus and that's just you know there's a raphe there as well you'll see like a little uh, a line in that area there's a raphe which is a normal split line for those kind of things so anyway this is here we go part i don't know four five six seven something like that uh of reproductive basically that completes that part and the next part would be Pregnancy, which you guys can read about, and there's all kinds of other fun stuff about that. And the baby usually starts face down, turns around face up, and always turns to the, the what, clockwise if you're looking from the body, from the mom's body out, or counterclockwise if you're looking from the mom, mom outside. Um, you can see probably in the book there's a lot of fertility stuff, and there's a lot of pathology, which we're not going to get into here, so you guys can go through that. Um, look through your notes, look through your book. Remember, this is still chapter eight, uh, 19 of your book and the next chapter we get to go into um, is chapter 20 of course Actually, there is no cap chapter 20 that basically ends the book so that's the end of this this book and the next time we go over things will be different chapters so there you go this is dr sean over at concord career college's um bio 1320 i think it is and uh do your homework do your discussion boards I'll be looking at those, and then we'll see you guys in the meeting on Wednesday morning. Bye.